In this episode of Micromatic, I'm going to share some basic tips for better photo composition. This week I wanted to take a break from talking about camera lenses and camera gear because as everyone should know, having the best camera gear is no guarantee that you're going to get the best photos. Taking good photos requires thoughtful composition and having thousands of dollars worth of camera gear is not going to mean that you automatically have thoughtful composition. That's where you come in. Uh, and so for this video, I just wanted to take a quick minute and talk about some very, very basic level tips for better photo composition. These are the sorts of things that I have in mind for basically every photo that I take. Uh, and there are things that I guess I'm advising that you should have in mind as well. Um, they're certainly not the only rules of photo composition. Uh, there's a lot to it, you'll, as you'll learn. You know, I'm still learning a lot myself. Uh, but I think these four tips will get you started. Now my first tip is straighten your horizons. Uh, this is something that I actually didn't do for a long time when I started getting into photography. Um, I took a lot of photos. I had a decent DSLR camera and I would go out and take pictures of landscapes or pictures of my motorcycle. And I wasn't quite sure why they always felt just a little bit off until I realized that a lot of professional photography, pretty much all of it, had straight horizons. And it's a very basic thing to forget about. It's easy to forget about, uh, but it's a really easy thing to fix. So when I talk about having a straight horizon, imagine you've taken a picture of a sunset over the ocean and you can clearly see the horizon. Uh, the idea is that, that that horizon should be perfectly horizontal across the frame of the photograph. Um, and this applies for photos where you're not taking a picture of the ocean as well. Uh, although sometimes it's a little bit harder to make out the horizon. Um, an easy way to find the horizon or to make sure that your photo is level with the horizon is to enable the level on your camera. Pretty much all modern mirrorless cameras will have a built-in electronic level that you can optionally enable while you're shooting uh, photographs. For Olympus cameras, I can demonstrate here and show you what it looks like, but on Panasonic cameras, there's a similar leveling system. And what that does, what that does is it lets you know when you have the camera level. And if your camera is level, that basically guarantees that your horizon is going to be straight. Uh, now, I, like I mentioned, sometimes horizons aren't always visible in your picture, but there's still going to be ways that you're going to, you're going to know that that photo is not level if it's not. Um, a lot of the times it's a matter of straightening it to a vertical horizon. I don't think that's the correct term, but say you're taking a picture of a building and you're trying to take that, you know, a nice square picture. If the, 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 edge, the vertical edge of the building is not vertical with the, the edges of the photograph, it's going to give that photo an uneasy kind of, I don't know, almost amateur feeling. And so that's an easy way to correct for it. Another tip for getting level horizons in your photographs is to enable the grid overlay on your camera's finder. Uh, you can do it on iPhones, you can do it on Android phones, and of course you can do it on your Micro Four Thirds cameras. Um, there's usually an option that will let you lay a grid on top of the photograph, right? And maybe you think that it looks a little distracting, but I'll be honest, it's actually really, really helpful. And my suggestion is that you definitely turn it on. And now enabling that grid overlay will actually help you with my second pro tip for better photo composition, and that's to use the rule of thirds. You might've heard of the rule of thirds before, uh, but in case you haven't, it is the concept that Photographs tend to look better when subjects or when certain lines fall across third lines. Um, and to give you a better sense of what a third line is, here, I'll just show you with a grid on top of this image. When you enable the visual grid in your camera, it's going to put two vertical lines and two horizontal lines across the image. And that gives you basically a grid of nine squares, right? Okay, that's a lot of numbers, sorry. Um, but the basic gist of it is that if you line up the subject of your photograph across where those lines meet, it tends to make more attractive, more pleasing photographs. You know, where those lines meet just kind of ends up being where people's eyes tend to gravitate. And if you have something interesting at that point where people are looking, then it's you know obviously gonna be a photo that just jives well with people. A lot of the times I like to focus, you know, people's eyes right on those rule, uh, those third lines, uh, or if it's maybe a horizon, Maybe it's, you know, you're deciding how much of the, the photograph you want to be sky versus land, right? And then measuring that across that third line, uh, one, it just kind of makes the, the, that question a little bit easier for you to answer, but also tends to make the photo a little bit more pleasing to look at. My third tip 
is to reduce background distractions. If you're taking a picture, taking, let's say, a portrait of a person, and there are distracting things in the background, right? The distracting things might be a door frame, might be a garbage can, it might be another person coming into the frame. Those distractions will distract from the subject of your photograph and they'll make it just a little bit less pleasing or sometimes make it even a little bit harder to draw attention to your subject. Sometimes those background distractions are just lines through the photograph, right? They are a line from a door frame or from a window frame or you know the side of a building or a handrail. Those kinds of distracting lines can be a problem or maybe it's just the line that happens and the difference between your foreground and your background, right? Let's say you're taking a picture of a person standing in front of a grassy hill with a sky behind it. Where that grassy hill turns into the sky, right, becomes a line across your photograph. And if that line happens to kind of bisect your, your subject's head, it will create a distraction. Uh, and these are the kinds of distractions that you want to get rid of. Now there's a couple of tips for getting rid of these distractions. One, use a long focal length. A longer focal length is going to give you a narrower field of view uh, than a wide angle lens will give you. And that just makes it that much easier to reduce the number of background distractions that there are in the photograph, right? If you've got a really narrow field of view, uh, it's easy to knock out distracting things like this bookshelf or this, you know, this sign over here, uh, because you would only be looking at this portion of me and only whatever is directly behind me. With a wider angle of view, you're gonna kind of inherently get a lot more background distractions. And I think that's why personally, I struggle with wide angle. When changing focal length isn't necessarily the solution for you, another solution is to just try a different angle. Um, a lot of times, if you are shooting a subject head on, you might notice that there is a distracting, let's say a car behind them, right? But if you take a couple of steps to the left, maybe that car disappears. Uh, here's a photo I took of my cat, and you can see that there's a distracting line created by the window frame. And all I did was I shifted the camera, you know, six inches to the right, and it took out that distracting line. Now there might be some other distracting lines in this photograph, but at least I got rid of some of them. Uh, and then my last tip for removing background distractions is to use bokeh to your advantage. Uh, bokeh is just, you know, the description or the word that we use to describe uh, out of focus parts of a photograph. And so when you are taking pictures and you don't have a whole lot of control over your background distractions, blurring them out actually helps quite a bit with reducing their impact on the photo. Uh, when the subject is in focus and the background is out of focus, the, the viewer's eye just naturally goes to where the focus is. And so that, again, that reduces the impact of these background distractions. And my last tip for better photo composition is to just try different angles, different points of view. I feel like a lot of the times people get stuck in the rut of just shooting from their own perspective, right? I mean, it's kind of an easy thing to do. You're walking around with a camera and especially if you've got a viewfinder stuck to your eye, you're just going to take pictures from your eye level. A lot of the times when you're taking pictures of things that aren't necessarily at your same eye level, changing the angle of the camera is gonna end up with a lot more interesting composition. Uh, for example, let's say you're taking a picture of a dog, and if you're just taking a picture of that dog from your perspective, it's gonna feel like, I don't know, it's gonna feel like it was a picture taken by a person standing next to a dog. Whereas if you take that camera and you lower it to the dog's perspective, like eye level with the dog, you're gonna get a lot more engaging of a photograph, uh, it just, and it's gonna make for a more interesting composition. While this obviously applies to subjects like pets or kids, where they're down low and at a different angle, this can also apply to landscape photography. Um, just kind of think of how a photo of a mountain might look from an airplane versus a photo of a mountain from the foot of the mountain, right? You're taking a picture of the same thing, uh, maybe or even you could take a picture of that mountain from the same distance, but that different angle is gonna give you a totally different feel. And you know, in this case, it's again, it's not always about getting a low angle of view because sometimes a high angle of view will give you a better composition. Um, I guess in conclusion for this tip, uh, it's just try those different angles. You know, When you see something that you wanna take a picture of, try it from your own perspective, uh, but don't assume that that's the best perspective. Try a you know, frame from your perspective, try a frame from a low perspective, and try a frame from a high perspective if you have the chance. You might find that one of those other perspectives besides just your own natural perspective is gonna be a lot more interesting of a composition. 
So those are my basic rules for better photo composition, and hopefully they'll help you make some better photographs. But like all rules, these rules are meant to be broken. Uh, just because the rule of thirds tends to make better photographs doesn't mean that sometimes having the, the, the subject of your photograph dead center doesn't make a more striking photograph, right? Uh, just because I like level horizons in most of my photographs doesn't mean that sometimes having a nice dramatic angle to a photograph where the horizon is just completely thrown out the window, sometimes that can be a better, more engaging photograph and it lends its own quality to that picture, right? So again, these rules are not hard and fast rules. These are just tips. These are just kind of guides to get you started. Usually when I'm breaking these tips, it's because I'm doing it consciously. I want those background distractions in the photograph because they lend to the feeling of the scene. Or I want this odd angle with the unlevel horizon because it makes the car look like it's moving faster than it actually is. Things like this, right? It, 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 these rules are not rules. Do not consider them rules. Just consider them a starting point. And it's if you want to do something different, have a reason that you want to do something different because this sort of thought is what's going to make better photographs. Again, it's not about your camera gear. It's about your composition and your understanding of light. Uh, and hopefully I've got you started on the right point. But I'll be frank, I don't understand everything. I'm still learning a lot myself. And in fact, if you have your own tips for better photo composition, please leave them in the comments below. Let's help each other out uh, because this is, you know, this is something I'm, I'm I'm hoping I'm helping you guys, uh, but I'm also hoping that you guys can help me. I want to take better photographs and I want you guys to take better photographs. And in the end, we'll all take better photographs together and it will be happy and awesome and rainbows and third lines. We'll have better photographs together. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button down below. Uh, share the video with a friend if you have a friend that you think could benefit from these tips uh, and subscribe to the channel if you want more like this. And I'll see you next time in the next episode of Micromatic.